Hey everybody, I'm Mickey Gousset. So I'm coming back at you with another unscripted video because I'm trying to answer a question for someone on the GitHub community site. Now, if you've not been to the GitHub community site, github.community, it is a great place to go ask questions, answer other people's questions, and help the community in general. So the specific question, which we'll get to in a second, was about having one workflow in a repo trigger another workflow and some different ways to, to solve that and what's the best way to solve that. And the best way to solve that is to include what's called a GitHub app. So rather than me just ramble, let's just jump on over and let's look at the question. Let's look at a little bit of some of the answers that I suggested and then I'm gonna walk you through a solution that I built to show you how this works, okay? All right, so. Let's flip over here and I'm going to do this in one cut. So no edits, no nothing, which means I need to open up something real quick. There we go. Perfect. All right. So let's blow this up a little bit. Now, this was a question that was asked. Um, over here in if you go to github.community, it will take you to github.com slash org slash community discussions. And this was a specific question that was asked saying, hey, I'm trying to trigger a workflow after the creation of a new tag. So the first workflow triggers when a pull request is closed. Then when, and as part of that workflow, they create a tag and they push that tag to the repository. Then the second workflow they want to run because they pushed a tag to the repository. So he talks about how, you know, it talks about you, you can't, you, now you can't use the GitHub token for this, right? Because, and that's intentional because if you, if, if the GitHub token running that ran the first workflow could then kick off other workflows in that same repo, you could get yourself in an infinite loop. There's probably other reasons too, but that's one reason that I know of that you don't want to be able to do that. So instead, what you need to do is um, use a GitHub app or a personal access token to push the code, to push the tag back up into um, GitHub, which then will allow the workflow to trigger. So he talks about, I talked about, the, I mentioned that to him, that he's on the right track. Um, tell him to try it with a pat and a personal access token. He says that he got it working with the, with the pat, but he couldn't seem to get it to work, um, work with the GitHub app. So you can read through all this if you want to, but I, cr so I created a demo repo to see if I could either see what he was seeing or get this working. So I'm going to walk you through what I did in my demo repository to, to try to uh, prove out a solution to this and Hopefully this will be helpful for the person that asked the question and for anyone else that might run into this some point in time in the future. So the, I created a public repository over here, of course, at github.com slash DevOps Elvis. And I called the, the repository actions trigger on a new tag. So actions trigger on a new tag has two workflows in it. The first workflow is to create a tag when we close the PR. And if we look at this workflow, it's got a display name, create a tag or tag on PR close. We are triggering whenever a pull request is closed, which is happening when it merges and only against pull requests against the main branch. Perfect. I've also, so I've got one job called tag. I, I included an if statement to only run if this is a merged is true. So only run if this was, was merged because if they close out their, the pull request by not merging the code, I don't necessarily want to create a tag and I'm running on Ubuntu latest. Now the first step of this is I'm, I check out the repository and I need to check out the repository so that I have a place to create the tag on the runner that then I can push back up into the repo and GitHub. Now you'll notice I'm using the actions checkout action, but I'm also using a persist dash credentials faults. So what does that mean? Well, let's go look. 
So if we go to github.com slash actions slash checkout, and we do a search for persist, then we can see that the auth token has persisted in the local git config. The token is removed during post cleanup jobs. Set persist credentials false to opt out. So what I found was I needed to set persist, or actually what the user on the initial question found was that they needed to set that permissions to false in order to get it to, to, to work at least with a personal access token. So we did that. Then here's the rest of my code. I create a tag. So what I'm doing is just creating an environment variable that's the current date and time as a tag. Then I need to go to my GitHub app and get a installation token. So there are multiple actions out there you can use for this. I just happen to use this one. You'll notice that I give this app an ID and this is expecting two values. It's expecting app ID and it's expecting private key. And I have both of those set in a secret. And what we're gonna do in a moment is I'm gonna show you, um, we're gonna go create a whole brand new app and try to run this with a brand new app to show you how we set all that up as well. Then after we've, and what this will create right here is it gives us a token back that we could use, like a personal access token. It's not really a personal access token. It's a GitHub app installation token, but it has the same, can do the same kind of things with it. And I've given that GitHub app enough rights on my repository to where it can um, be able to push tags. So then I have my final step here where I say create and push a tag. Now, first thing I do is I replace the GitHub underscore token in this step with the token that I used, steps auth, auth, outputs token. Then I set up my git config and I set up to, to have my username and email. In this case, I'm just setting it to GitHub Actions bot. I'm echoing out my tag name to make sure it works. I'm creating a tag and then I'm doing a push. And you can see in that push, I'm referencing, here's the output token to use to be able to um, push that code, push that code up. In fact, actually doing that, I probably don't even need this step, but we'll leave that step for completeness. It's not necessarily hurting anything. So this runs, when it runs, when a PR is merged, it creates a tag, pushes the tag up using a token from a GitHub app. And then if we look at my tag push re, um, workflow, it runs whenever a new tag is pushed. And all I'm doing here is writing out hello world. And I'm also dumping out the GitHub context object in case I want to look at any information in the GitHub context object. Now, before I can run this, I do need to set an app ID secret and an app private key secret. So let's create a brand new GitHub app and walk through this process to do that. All right, so I'm gonna come out here to github.com DevOps Elvis. And I'm gonna to go to settings. And we'll go to developer settings, GitHub apps. And I'm gonna create a new GitHub app here. So I need to sign in, that's fine. GitHub. Sign in to GitHub. Oh, wrong password. Let's try that again. That's better. So we need to give our GitHub, first thing we're doing is creating the application. So we're gonna call this DevOps Elvis Pat Delete Me. You need to give it a homepage URL. It doesn't really matter what you give it. I'm just gonna say, GitHub.com, not worried about expiration of user tokens. 
not using webhooks. But what I do need to specify on this app are the permissions that I want to give it. Repository permissions, org permissions, account permissions, enterprise permissions. In this case, I'm going to give it repository permissions. And the only permissions it really needs is read and write on contents. So we'll scroll down to the bottom. And I'm only going to allow it to be installed on the DevOps Elvis organization. So we're going to create this GitHub app. Now, creating this GitHub app, once you create it, we're on this page. Now, we've created the app. We haven't installed it yet, but we've created it. But what we're going to need from this app in order for us to be able to... Um, give me one second here. In order for us to be able to access the app, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need to do the app ID or the client ID. It used to be you used app ID. Now you can use client ID, but in this case, the action I'm using still uses the app ID. So we're going to need the app ID. So I'm going to copy that over here so I have it. And then we're also going to need, all the way down here at the bottom, a private key. Now, when I click this generate private key, it's going to generate a, a .pem file for us. And if I open that file using Notepad, or using Notepad, then if you've never seen a private key before, I'm gonna put a bunch of stuff in here, make it where you can't, actually I'll probably just delete this app after we're done. But if you've never seen a private key before, it's gonna look like this. So what we're gonna need to do is take all of the contents starting from here all the way to here and copy those into a secret. So let's do this. So we now have a private key and we have our app ID, but before we can do anything else with it, we need to install the actual application. So I'm going to install this app and I'm going to install it onto DevOps Elvis. And when I install it onto DevOps Elvis, I can give it access to all repositories, or I can give it access only to select repositories, whatever I want to do. So you know what, I'm going to say just do it with select repositories, and let's do a search. And we'll just select the repo that I'm working in, and I'm going to click Install. So now this app's going to be installed in this organization and have access to that repository, which means I can now use the app ID and the private key to be able to access that app to get a token so then I can do the whole push the tag thing. All right, so let's go back over to our repository then. And if we go to settings in our repository and we go to secrets, then we need to set the app private key and the app ID. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to grab my app ID. And then I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to grab my private key. And remember, when you grab the private key, you also include the begin RSA private key and end RSA private key. And I'll update that secret. So at this point now, if we go back to our repository, oh, we're in our repository, my bad. So if we go to our repository, here we are, and let's go to the readme file. Let's edit the readme file. And we're going to say YouTube rocks and commit a change. Now we're going to commit that change. Let's update the message. We're going to commit that change to a new branch. So we'll call it, we'll make a new branch called Mickey Gousset YouTube rocks. And now we're going to create a new branch with that change. And we're going to propose, or in this case, create a pull request for that change. Well, we might as well ask 
Copilot generates a summary. Why not? And Copilot points out that I made a small change to the readme file. Rock on. So let's create this pull request. Now, nothing runs when we create the pull request. But what, what happens, though, is when we close the pull request, we should, um, or when we merge it, it should create a tag. Now, let's look out here. Right now, we've got four tags. The latest tag was from two hours ago. So let's go to our pull request. And let's select that pull request, and let's merge it. Now, by merging this pull request, if we now go to the Actions tab, you'll see that the tag on PR close action is running, or it's waiting to run. It's going to kick off here in just a moment. There it goes. All right, so we created the tag name. There's the tag that should have been created. It ends in 4708. Looks like it pushed correctly. If we come out here to code, we now have five tags instead of four. Just now, 478, so there's the one that we pushed. And if we go back to our actions, we will also see that the tag push just ran 11 seconds ago. And of course it wrote out say hello. It also jumped out, dumped out the GitHub context object. And back over here on the actions tab, you can see that here, the tag on PR close ran because I merged it, so I closed it. But here, the tag on push ran because we pushed that tag up using, well, that's not the easiest, that's an easier way to, oh, sorry about that. We pushed that tag up though, remember, using our app, which we named DevOps Elvis Pat Delete Me. So there you go. This is an example of how you could have one workflow trigger another workflow in the same repository. And in this specific example, we're wanting the second workflow to run when we push a tag. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that made sense. Um, I'll link to the community issue. If you've got questions or comments or, or hey, if you've got a better way even, I'll, you know, go comment on that community issue and also go look at some of the other questions that are out there in the community and see if you can provide an answer. Or if you have a question, put it out there. Heck, tag me in it if you want to and then I'll get a notification and I'll come look at it and see what I can do to help. Thanks for watching.